This is Comet Picks by the Glick. Hey, and I'm your host, Jason Glick. Good evening, Jason Glick. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing just fine, John. And yourself? Uh, not bad. Are we T-minus how many days to Comic-Con now? <laughs> oh, it's about a yeah, month. Th- uh, oh, right, two, right, two weeks out. No, wait, no, three weeks out as of this Wednesday. Yep, three weeks so, out. So, it's like, I mean, I, it's like, yeah, it's like with Comic-Con, it's like, it's, I'm always, yeah, there's, there's always the anticipation, but at the same time, you know, it's like, after our experience with Last Fondamé and the fact that, you know, we've got more people lined up to go to this next one, I just keep thinking, okay, it's been about a month since we, since Fondamé, so there's like 11 months left. Yes. So, I mean, this is awful for me for a, to keep anticipating a con that I just went to. <laughs> um, but you know that's that's my mindset right now. So Comic Con, I mean, yes, everything's all taken care of. I got my room, got my ticket, and you know I'm, I'm probably thinking of like a list of stuff to, stuff to pick up. But it's like, eh, well, yeah, yeah, it's like it's. But hey, you know, those those three weeks are just gonna fly by. Where the next eleven months towards um like Final May 2014 are just gonna drag on and on. Yeah. So what do you have for us tonight? All right, so like I promised last time, I'm talk, back talking about a single author um, by the name of James Stoko. Stoko um, first came to my attention when I picked up one of his one of his books called um, Orkstein um, in at Comic Con in 2011. Now, the book the collection came out back in 2010, but had it actually come out that year, it would have. Like, to be honest, like that was the best thing I. That volume of Orkstein was the best thing I read in 2011. I mean, yes, I found it in a half-off bin, just just sitting there, and I just thinking like, oh, you know, I think I remember hearing something about this series from Image. Might as well pick it up, and pick it up, and um, see what it's like. And my God, I was blown blown away by this. I mean, it's a, it yeah, it's a fantasy series. It's got the word orc in the title. So yes, it's about orcs, but it's a take on orcs that that, that you know defies popular popular convention and you know, outside of like you know, what we've seen of them in like say, the Lord of the Lord of the Rings movies. Um you've got um Stoko does a fantastic um job with world building in this like, in this series. I'm um, showing us like a showing us like like orcs like an orc civilization that is it's 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 familiar to us in a lot of ways in the sense that you know they're very they're very selfish but selfish selfish craven horny beings you know out, mostly out for their own own interest and um you know like Will will like you know, betray uh, their their brethren at the drop of, drop of a hat, but at the same time though it's like we get these um get these great bits as this, this series goes. This focuses on this one one orc who goes by the name of One Eye, I and mean, as we're told in the series, um, orcs really don't get names until they're until they're dead, unless they achieve a certain status when they're dead. When they do, they get a number. So so um One Eye. So one eye, um, he's teamed up with this um, with this other um, ne'er do well orc um, in order to um, crack some safes in the countryside and in order to get some money for their let's see for their for their local mob boss. And the and what results though is a uh, is a jailbreak unlike anything you've ever seen that has this, like this weird bear bear type creature with a um, vault um, planted in its chest and this and this um, bird that serves an alarm on its head. It's Let's see. It's bizarre in the sense that you've got, that you've got then you have to watch the you get to see um one eye basically um de like um de alarm the uh, the bear by um taking out by taking out the bird in a specific fashion and then um breaking open the, the bear only to find out that the bear has been its guts have um seeped into the safe and corroded it but oh but they found some sort of um like a, they find a sort of uh cre- of um larva of um like a like a bug that can um like give you a great high when you smoke it, and um hey it's great for um hooking up the wood nymphs who are just kind of like the uh kind of like the um like the sluts of the series of the series for the most part except for the ones who are the swamp like swamp um, mambas the poison throwers who have a which um who one eye encounters later on in the in the series and uh, it's like and like I said there's just it's like like it's like um, Soko creates this like this compelling, compelling story, this compelling world that like with, it's filled with all these details and feels like a lot feels incredible, feels very credible, like from the from the beginning. I mean, it's like we're sh- the the thrust of the series basically um has this has this one um orc known as the Orc Czar who is just unifying all, all all the tribes in the south and looking for the um the Ganga Gronch the um. Oh, just so you know, the Gronch, which is what all of orc, so- orc society is based off of, it's basically a giant cock. It's like, 
orc societies, like it's based like their their like their status, their money. I mean, there's a great bit at the end of the volume where which shows you how um, orcs how you can carve an orc cock in order to make um make the currency for this world, and it's it's disgusting, but but fascinating, and it's and um it's and um. And the orcs, but, the, but getting back to the main thrust of the series, you've got the orc czar who is told by the um, by, by by an oracle that you know he, he, if he's going to like achieve that get this Gunga Grunt, it'll basically make him king of all orcs. He's going to find have to find the one eyed orc who you know it's our hero right here because our because our one eyed orc he's got the ability that's not like um Karnak from the Inhumans, since that he can see a weakness in any it's like in any structure and that leads him to like do some incredible feats such as to, such as um like split a uh, split an executioner's um stand in two um um take out his um, entire apartment except for his except for his ba- his bathtub after people come looking for him or take or um, hit hit one of his um untrustworthy partners in such a way that his cock falls off so there you go i mean it's it's a great vulgar um ridiculous ridiculous series that that transcends its own for instance, it's like it's 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 juvenile it's juvenile nature by by the amount of de- detail and story that it that it packs packs into its world. It's a fantastic series, and I tried to learn to a buddy of mine who doesn't like fantasy. He was turned off by its color scheme, which you know is admittedly it's a bit weird. It's very um like greenish greenish blue and like all and um used like kind of like a non standard color set, but I didn't. Mind. I honestly didn't mind it, mind it at all. I mean, yes, the fact that this like series like focuses a whole lot on orc cock is certainly going to be a uh, a turnoff for for certain for a lot of people. And it's like it's like I said, it's still very very a very vulgar and violent series. But I thought, but this is the series that basically made me a believer in Stoko's art, especially it's like how incredibly ridiculously detailed it is. I mean, the problem is that it's apparently so detailed and it's series um sells like say on um, around the level of sweet fuck all that he's only been able to put out about like two issues um since this first trade paperback came out. So this falls into another one of those like you know if there's any justice in this world, um we'd be sell- the series would be selling in like the hundreds of thousands of copies and allow him to do like to to do it as a living as opposed to taking on you know various work for hire projects which I'll be talking about in a second. Because like I said, unfortunately, it's like he, like I said, he doesn't. Orkstein doesn't sell nearly as well as it should. So, um, like Stoko has had to um, go and to do other, go into like look other avenues for um, you know, revenue and such. Um, one of these I actually invested in personally, and that would be um, Sullivan Sluggers, a series he did for um, as work for hire with a writer named Mark Andrew Smith. Now, it's established this is work for hire because. This is this is this is a series. This um, graphic novel was funded through Kickstarter, and if you if you've already heard um, about the su- the struggles, the drama behind this series, then yeah, I'm going to reiterate it for you. But if you haven't, you should know that um, well, the series was successfully funded about a couple hundred percent above its um, original tar- tar- asking price, which I'm willing to put down more to like you know, like Stoko's involvement or. Or maybe just like the guy just did a really good job of, um, or Smith did a really good job of um, running ads on the Pirate Bay to get things funded. Anyway, but the thing is, the drama starts after the series was funded because, well, um, while Smith was like basically telling everyone to uh, that you know we were expecting things to start shipping around the uh, like around the beginning or end of last year. Well, apparently, um, Smith didn't fig- figure into the fact that. Um, Oh, he forgot to factor in international shipping for some of its backers. Yeah, so he was left holding the bag for for this, and um, he and there's been some slightly dubious um ways for him. He's trying to run some slightly dubious ways to um try and get the funding for this, such as doing a Kickstarter where oh the target price is one dollar, so everything above that you know just pay for like shipping for these other orders. Kickstarter put a stop to that, and he since went to Indiegogo. Thing is, though, it's like while well, the series has also been, the volume has also been be, being sold, was also being sold commercially, but backers like me um, had not gotten their copies yet. In fact, um, my, I didn't get my volume until about till about um, like about a month ago. 
So, so yeah, I and and um and this is after he, this is and this is only after a couple of weeks after he sent out a letter to his Kickstarter backers. Hey, if you haven't um like received it, um please send me and send me a message so that you can um get so I can send you your copy. Mind you, this is like five months after all the things were supposed to have shipped. So yeah, he um sent me. So yeah, he did send me my copy. Um, a couple weeks after he um sent out the me- message, and I responded to it. So, but hey, that's all water under the bridge now. I've got my book. It's a nice big omnibus edition or oh absolute style hardcover that um that makes some um, that allows Stoko's art to really shine in this in this style in like in this format. But is the story itself any good? Kind of. Well, I don't know. It's like, the, it's, the, the, um, the series is basically about a bunch of, uh, um, like, like a minor league baseball team made up of guys who used to play in the, who made, played for at least one season in the majors, um, who, and they're, and they've all got their, you know, particular, particular quirks. And like the, um, like the, uh, guy, like the lead guy who's, um, who, uh, like dropped the, dropped the ball at the one, the, one one major game, like the rookie who's looking for big, bigger and better things, you know, like characters like that, and it's not how they wind up going to this one town called Malice, and they uh, and then they wind up um go wind up fight um finding a bunch of demons it's like in the it's like it's like in the city because like that's there's the very um because the um, town has a very dark twisted background to it. <sighs> the problem with this series is. That um that um even though Smith like tells things in a fairly competent manner, the um the characters themselves aren't really aren't really fleshed out at all. I mean it's like they just they don't seem to react to the fact that oh yeah there's demons around here. Oh wait no we're just gonna go in and start grabbing stuff and start killing them you know willy willy nilly. Um and it's it's like it's just it's just like a, not there's like not a whole lot of depth to this. To the story at all. I mean, yes, we find out this tragic backstory behind behind Malice, and yes, it's it's sad and all, but but at the same time, like there's not a whole reason for us to care about the uh, the like these characters, except for the fact that they're you know they're not demons and you know not evil and all. So it's it's very it, like, it feels very um, pro formula and per, and perfunctory, and you know but but uh, but what makes it work though, or at least what makes it readable. Is, is Stoko's art? I mean, he guy guy gets some chances to like draw some fantastic demons, especially it's like a nice like a multi-page spread when like the giant um, boss demon comes out, and we just like a this incredible multi-page spread of it, and it's and it and it is down downright incredible. I mean, it's a great showcase like for Stoko, but um, less so for uh, Smith, who is the guy who masterminded this whole process. And it doesn't surprise me that apparently, that according to Smith, um, Stoko took years working on this. Um, it doesn't surprise me, but he apparently said some not very nice things about Sto- Stoko. And um, Stoko responded um, to all the uh, Kickstarter problems by saying, yeah, I'm, I'm disowning this. This is not, like, like I, it's like, I, it's like, I, this is just work for hire for me, so, so there. So you can take it up, I'll take it up with the writer. And to be honest, like yeah, that's disappointing because like you know I bought I didn't buy this for Smith I bought it for Stoko because you know after after uh, Orc like um Orc stain I figured okay you know I gotta get some I gotta where can I get more of this guy oh wait he hasn't done a whole lot of stuff like there's this two volume series he did for um Oni called um Wonton Soup which you know I would have loved to have talked about for this series but then when I went to, onto Amazon to order they um basically it's it seems to be effectively out of print. Um, because Amazon's now telling, well, instead of just telling me like, no, it's not going to happen. Amazon's telling me, oh, if you're lucky, it'll sh- you'll have copies before the end of August. So, but, but then when you go down to all the uh, used and um, new vendors, they're start- they're selling it at like absurd prices, which basically say, that, yeah, this is kind of out of print, which is disappointing. But you know, hey, if you're like me and you and you wanted wanted more Stoko after Orkstein, then yeah, like they're Sullivan Sluggers. It'll satisfy you on a purely artistic basis, and the story will leave you thinking that, hey, you know, I think I there's a couple things here that I think could have been tweaked. Like make the, uh, like make the um, baseball players don't make them like unknown to I have no idea about all these um, supernatural things. Make them like a kind of like a supernatural 
like I'm I, like a supernatural baseball team hunter. Like you know, take the uh, the superstitious nature of, of sports guys and just like turn in like make them kind of like like the super, like the supernatural like demon hunters and all. So when so they're actually going to malice in order to clear it out. So you know, it's it's a kind of, it's a story that, that provokes me into thinking. Yes, I could have written something better. That's not necessarily true. I mean. I haven't written written anything at all, you know, aside from what you read on the site. But that's the kind of thing that, that feeling that leaves me leaves me with at the end of, at the end of the volume. Still, though, if you if you don't want to um bother bother with Sullivan Sluggers and you want more Stoko, well, you're in luck though, um, because something came out a couple weeks back a couple weeks ago that after being epically jerked around by Amazon as to this volume's release date, um, it finally arrived slightly earlier than they initially advertised. This is um, Godzilla, the half-century war. Now, everyone loves Godzilla, right? Right, John? Right. Yeah. All right, because, you know, I, cause, I mean, as much as I love Godzilla, though, it's like I could hardly give a shit about, you know, any comics and all, because, you know, there's, you know it's like, yeah, just, there's not going to a whole lot of people like who I want to see write Godzilla, you know, take him on. But when I heard that um, Stoko was... Um, writing the guys in the I thought, man, why the fuck isn't he writing more um, work stain? But then, you know, I realized that was a, that's a really dick attitude to take. So I think, okay, we're getting more Stoko. I'm all over this, like, white on rice as soon as it comes out in paperback. So, now that it, it is out in paperback, what do I think? Well, hey, you know, it's like, I've never read any, any other Godzilla comics before this. But, you know, after reading it, um, I can't, you know, why would I want to read any more Godzilla stories than this? It's it basically um, focuses the half century war is based in the title. Basically, talks about the um, the fifty years that its title, its main character, um, Otomura Kami, um, uh, who, who, we, who were introduced um, to um, when Godzilla attacks Japan in nineteen fifty four. Um, he's just enlisted in the self defense force, and he's there for like, Godzilla's first first attack on Japan. And um, he, and it's like and. Even though he's like a, he's a green um, green enlistee, it's like he and it's like um, he and his buddy managed to um, like um, get get the big guys to um, survive an encounter with the big guy and get his attention long enough in order to save a bunch of refugees as as um, as the big G stomps through Tokyo. So from there though, he winds up after this this stunt basically um, gets him gets gets the attention of a uh, Colonel Schuler, and um, he winds up in. Listed into the um, anti megalosaurus um, force, basically like you know, anti Godzilla corps, and from there, um, this like um, his half century, um, um, like his half century, um, like obsession or quest to take out Godzilla, um, like begins. But it and but, but it does, but it gets more and more, more complicated as things go on because you know with, as they find out um, late in the second issue, Godzilla isn't the only monster out there. I mean, you've then you've got you start getting other guys like um, t- like, um, like Mothra, Rodan, um, the Smog Monster, like all these all these crazy monsters, all these crazy monsters, and um, it's like it's it's just charts like the but it also does a good job of charting like the overall uh, like evolution of God's like you know the Godzilla concept and franchise. And since like you know, first it was just all about Godzilla in Tokyo. But now we're spreading things out to fight more monsters, and also we're just going out more. Things are going going across the globe as well. It eventually evolved not only just not only into just you know like us against um, Godzilla, but also like you know us against Godzilla and these other monsters, and also us and Godzilla versus these other monsters as well. It's like it does a good job of capturing like all the like the evolution of the Godzilla character, you know, from just like outright antagonist to you know, like. To just uh, con- almost almost reluct- reluctant um uh, like al like ally in this in like in the in these fights and it's like and also like um, Murakami also undergoes some some growth as well. I mean he's even though like it like we're, we're meant, it's kind of meant to play like he's, he's like he's obsessed with this with, with Godzilla. It's like he does he remains like a very like a very sympathetic and relatable presence to, throughout. Especially in the later volumes, when, when he becomes when he's like this old older character, um, realizing that um, he's you know, he's, he's kind of like, like this is his life. He doesn't have he doesn't have any life beyond you know tracking Godzilla. And so hey, you know if I'm going to I um, this is how I'm going to like, 
end my this is how I'm going to spend the rest of my days. I might as well find some purpose purpose in them, especially in the end when he finally tries to get Godzilla to notice him after fifty years of fighting fighting against and with him to a certain certain extent. And um, true to form, though, like the art the art is spectacular. Like um, Soko maintains an insane level of detail throughout the five issues collected here. And you know, it's like you know, it's like it's like I said, it's it's basically like you know, a Godzilla, like sort of the Godzilla franchise and store and character in. It's like in miniature. It's like after reading this, it's kind of like you know, do I this IDW who publishes also publishes other Godzilla stories? But do I re- do I really feel a need to go out and buy more Godzilla stories after this? No, this kind of like satisfies my whole you know Godzilla comics buying urge right here. In fact, I can't imagine like you know them throwing more more impressive or crazier sites than you know than Godzilla. Godzilla and Mechagodzilla teaming up with um, with uh, oh, what oh, team with God, Mechagodzilla and Godzilla teaming up, teaming up to fight out fight off um, Gigan and King Ghidorah it's like in the final it's like in the final issue with the aid of a black hole cannon as well so I mean it's not like it's certainly not like the, like the deepest series or like one for the most death I mean God, come on it's Godzilla after all I mean yes May have started off as like a metaphor for like the perils of um, the nuclear age, but really it's like it's at this point it's just like it's Godzilla. He's fighting. He's like we just want to see like you know the guy in the rubber suit um, beating the shit out of other guys in rubber suits. And um, Oda's and um, Oda's quest does add a does add a nice amount of like like um, depth to it to the point where it's like it's not just we're not just like dealing with you know like Michael Bay like all style no substance um, assaults on. It's like assaults in the senses. I mean, but also, I think this would make a if, if they wanted to like. I mean, I understand they're making another. They're doing another reboot of Godzilla right now, but you know, it's like if to say Japan ever wanted to kickstart Godzilla again, like I think they would want the adapting this story. You know, showing Godzilla through like through the ages, like in one one story would be a, would make a, make for a nice nice all in one like event right here. So. Like I said, if you, if you want to buy a Godzilla story, go ahead and buy this one. If you're a fan of Stoko like me, you probably already own it. So, I mean, it's, I mean, the guy, the guys, right now, he's he's one of those guys who like I will like even though, like I've never really been what like um guy someone who will buy someone buy it like a a creator just just to see their art. Um, I will do it for Stoko, but really the guy is is at his best when he's also writing his own. His own work as well, so I, so I loved, certainly, like thrilled to see what what else he's going to do. I hope that he um does keeps doing more orc stain because it's because that is really like truly fantastic. It's it's great sick twisted depraved fantasy stuff that transcends you know it's like your your expectations of of the genre and something I would highly recommend to anyone who it's like who is who looks at um, Lord of the Rings and goes meh too pretty, but hey if you're also, but hey, if, you, if you're like me and you're a big fan of the late departed, recently resurrected in some zombie form, um, Poison Elves, then um, this is a series that I would thoroughly um, recommend you check check out as well. I'm certainly looking forward. I certainly hope that those um, volumes of um, Wonton Soup ship from Amazon, or that I'm able to find them at Comic Con as well. So there's so there's that to look forward to as well. But Stoke James Stoko, right now it's like he's a guy. It's like I would buy anything from him. Anything! All right. John, any thoughts? No, not really. <laughs> All righty then. <laughs> All righty then. Yes, uh, Godzilla comic. Uh, that sounds interesting. Yes, absolutely. Um, interesting. Is there a resurgence now in monsters? I wonder if there will be. <laughs> uh, probably. Any the- it's one of those things where everything comes back around again. It sure does. Um, yeah, the IEW has been publishing Godzilla comics for a couple couple of years now. They seem to be they seem to be doing all right by it. But even though they, they keep it, the series has been so successful, they've able to been they've been able to keep it running consistently. They keep relaunching it like every every year or so with new number one. So there you go. Okay. Well, and do you have... Uh, oh, we're going to have one more podcast before uh, Comic-Con. Is that right? And then... 
Yeah, and then you'll have to be surprised. Then you'll like be likely to be surprised with whatever I bring bring back from the event. But as far as what that 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 next um the next podcast is going to entail, well, that'll depend on whether or not um Amazon decides to ship um ship the last volume of Jonathan Hickman's Fantastic Four. If it ships if it ships in time, then yeah, I'll be covering. I'll be doing my perspective on his on his run on the title. If it doesn't, oh well, hey, I'll think of something. You know, I will. All right, and until that time, we'll uh, catch you later on Comic Picks by the Glick. All right, laters. Bye.